Hi. I always like to start off with this song. I don't know why, but it's a, an American folk song, which some of you might know, called Make Me Down a Pallet on Your Floor. And of course, English is not an endangered language, as yet, probably never will be. So I've translated it into my own mother tongue of Welsh. Neidi weli clid i mi fan hyn Neidi weli clid i mi fan hyn Neis ar lawr iawn i mi fy ffrein Mae'n sgyn i'n ffim a goch na mi'n llai fyn Di bod yng nghwm i criw y gwyn ar gael Di bod yng nghwm i criw Fringia mawr sy'n troi yn fringia mawr A na sgyn ti'r mol am y med a'r tân A'r fel a'n ym yn nilyn fel i'w gyd A'r fel a'n ym yn nilyn fel i'w gyd O mae'n cyfaith ar yn ferai Thank you. Misbehaves slightly, tuning-wise. Um, a few years ago, I was traveling in South America, and I went to Bolivia and Peru, down through Chile, and across Argentina to the Welsh community in Patagonia. And I stayed with some friends in the Gaiman and borrowed Hector Ariel's guitar and wrote this song. But the song actually originated in Peru on Lake Titicaca. Have you heard of the Uros Islands? They're these collections of islands made entirely out of reeds. They're man-made. And the inhabitants subsist entirely on the reeds. They build their houses out of them and they eat them and they make their crafts with them. And a particular woman called Elsa was incredibly welcoming and showed me around her home, let me wear her traditional costumes and so on. And when it came time to leave and say goodbye, she asked me would I buy one of her crafts. And I was trying to ask her how much it cost and I couldn't understand what she was saying. And what she did was she grabbed one of the reeds, cut it in half and etched the price on the skin of her hand so that I could see how much it cost. And this must be something she did regularly, you know, because she did it so naturally. But it left a great impression on me and it really brought home that connection with material and 
land and where you live and your culture and all this. So I wrote a song called Girl of Reeds for Elsa. And in the song I describe her way of life and how hard life was for her on this island. And at the, in the last verse I say that, um, you know, there's not much thanks for all your hard work. No one's going to throw you roses on stage or anything. But you will leave behind you countless reeds. So, so there's a great heritage which Elsa will leave behind. Yeah, <laughs> Gaat u de deling, glied van de storm in het dier. Bergenbroen, oh bergenbroen. Bergenbroen, oh bergenbroen. Bergenbroen, die koe in de kaart. Skurjasuist Pries maar haat aan wat er al niet in mijn drie. Bergenbroen, oh bergenbroen. Bergenbroen, oh bergenbroen. As well as experiences I've had in my own life and folk music and folk songs from Wales, another source of inspiration for my songs and many other Welsh singer-songwriters like myself is the stories we hear. And I was very fortunate. I had a grandfather who was forever telling stories and he used to love telling them and he became very animated when he told them. And one of the stories he used to tell was the true story of the shark in the park in Portmadog, which was a town near where I was brought up. And two of my great, great ancestors, great, great uncles, they were fishermen in Borthagest, but they didn't really enjoy fishing. They preferred to go down to the pub or the bar, as you'd say here, and just get very, very drunk. But one day they caught a dead shark, a huge dead shark in their fishing nets. And they tried to wonder, you know, how can we make some money out of this? So what they did is they carried the shark to the town and they built a makeshift 
tent out of their sails and displayed the shark in the tent and asked people to pay a few pennies to see the shark in a kind of freak show. And they did this and it was very successful and they went out that night and they spent all their money in the bar and they got up the following morning slightly hungover and they went back into the tent but the, the stink was atrocious the shark's flesh had started to stink and it stunk so bad or stank so bad the health officer had to come and demand that they bury the shark there and then in the earth so that was the end of the shark scam. But although the money came to an end, the story remained and lived between the four walls of the pub. And if you go online on my website, you'll see a photograph of the shark and two bearded men who were my ancestors. And my grandfather passed away a few months ago, but I'm glad to say that his stories still alive. Dai valum teu, dai draus di reitis, oi den henki, a goen prefis, en karir kuru, en buin ar kembo, en gweld a ngau yon em o bango. In laun o ha, ar hui din drang yon, Ar ddol fan goes, o ben waig gwenion Mi wel san sgodim, tra gwahanol Gawr y gryndod yn ei canol Bed iawn nawr ni, ar cradur y mha Rown yn ôl, yng nghol y tonna I iawn a gol, i dre porth ma dog Mae hwn werth mwy na ffim can pendo A dyma i godi ar ei sgwydda A chodi pabach o hen gwyliau A bod o'r hyn a chodi ceinio Am gip gosyd un o'r sgodi nen o gwaith O weld y siarc yn y parc yn bod A fawb yn heidio o goch eil Gael i dychryn yn y dref Weld y mae'n gael fawr Feindi a staldo A wnaf y flis i warion fortio I a fwn gwrw am y gora A mi nawn i fwy o bres yn gora A'r doriad gwaw, daeth bloed y prismo Gwadwch y cenna ar y chingon Er i oed ni frofais y ffasiwn frewdod Mae port i gyd yn drewi o bysgod Mae pen a'n drwm rhwng o son hegan Mi glad o'n y siarc yn ddim yn y ddeia A darfu'r hwyl, a darfu'r arian Parhaiwn ar hanas rhwng myrru ar gafar Parhaiwn ar hanas rhwng myrru ar gafar Ie, diolch taid Taid is grandfather, so diolch is thank you, so thank you, Taid. <coughs> In Welsh we have three words for butterfly. One is gloyen byw, and another one is pilipala, which is a more kind of childish version of Papillon, French papillon, I suppose. And the last one is my favourite. The last one is Yar Vachr Hav, which literally means little pen of the 